Hello everyone, it's Phil here from 121IELTS and in today's lesson we're going to be focusing on writing examples for a cause and solution essay. In this video I'll go through the areas that you've got to make sure that your example is supporting and relating to and in this particular essay type it's really important to give a result for your solution and we'll look at how to do that. So welcome everyone to today's lesson. We're going to be looking at how to write examples for a cause and solution essay. When we write examples, the purpose of writing examples is to support the main idea that you've already introduced in your topic sentence. Make sure that your examples are not only connected to what you have in your topic sentence, but are also uh, referring directly to the question that we're answering. So some people just look at their topic sentence and kind of forget about the specifics uh, that you, the actual question itself is talking about. Examples do not need to be true, but they do have to be believable. You want to avoid writing personal examples and avoid made up statistics. Again, you're not going to lose marks for using statistics, but it goes back to what we said before about they need to be believable. If you're just coming up with statistics out of thin air, it's generally not believable. If your examples are not believable, they do not support your ideas. Don't make stuff up if it's not believable. If you have some statistics, if you're knowledgeable in the field of the essay that you're writing about and you happen to know some statistics, great, use those. If not, we can use more general expressions. So rather than saying 90%, you could say a large percent or a majority. So we can just avoid the specific statistics. If you're going to give an example of a solution, you also need to show a result that this solution has worked. Just saying that someone has tried a solution does not support your main idea. You need to show someone tried the solution you're talking about and it was successful. By showing a successful result, you have supported your main idea. By giving no result, it is not a strong example and it doesn't really help you develop your essay. The essay we are looking at today, we started a couple of weeks ago, was in many countries, crime rates among younger people have been rising. Discuss the causes and solutions for this problem. Why have I highlighted the S's? We have multiple ideas, so we need to be giving two causes, two solutions. So in a multiple idea essay, We've got two main ideas. We're going to have two explanations. But how many examples do we have in each of our main body paragraphs? Great, yeah, only one. So that means we're only going to have to have an example for one of our causes. So we're going to have two causes, but only one example. We're going to have two solutions, but only one example. So that means when you are planning your essay, so we need to go back to the planning stages here. When you're looking at your two causes, so you generate your ideas, you're like, okay, I've got two causes, I've got two solutions. You need to think which one of these causes, which one of these solutions is it easier to create an example for? Because the one it is easier to create an example for should be the cause that you mention last. So the more difficult idea goes first, the easier one to create an example for goes second because we always give an example for our second idea that we mentioned. So these were the ideas that we came up with last week. One of the reasons for these rising crime rates is that young people lack employment opportunities. And then the second idea was another reason is that some television programs negatively influence the younger generation. And this is completely up to you. There's no right or wrong. And I'm just going to take a quick vote of the students in my chat. Which one of these do you think is easier to come up with an example for one or two? This is the idea we'll find an example for the causes. How about for solutions? So these are the two solutions we had. One of the solutions for this problem is to provide better education. Another approach to tackle this problem is to implement harsh punishments for young offenders. Which one of these two ideas do you think would be easier to find an example for? Two, okay. <laughs> One of the areas that students struggle with when looking at examples is generating ideas. Therefore, anytime you need to write an example, you want to be thinking, how can you make your example specific? 
make sure that it's related to the question. And the most important thing, make sure that it is supporting your main idea. The topic sentence that we are looking for an example for in our cause paragraph is another reason is that some television programs negatively influence the younger generation. A good idea when trying to generate ideas for your examples is to look at what are the key words. So certainly we're talking about television programs. They have a negative influence and we're dealing with young people. So these are areas that need to be in our main question. And in this particular question, the question is talking about TV causes increased crime rates. That's what the whole question is talking about. Therefore, we need to mention it doesn't just negatively influence the young people. It negatively influences them in a way that they end up committing crimes. If I was going to try and generate ideas for this question, these would be the three areas I would think about so I can try and make this quite specific. So I would think of a place where maybe people are watching television and have been reported to commit crimes. Maybe think of a news story that I have read or watched. If in the first place you are coming up with the cause that television negatively influences young people, it's probably because you've read this somewhere or you've seen this somewhere. But try and think back to some time that you've maybe read a news story or watched a news program where this is the case. You don't really have to remember every specific detail of that story, but you can certainly use what memory you have of that story to base an example around. And then maybe think about a specific crime that has been committed because people have watched television. You don't need to include every one of these. All of these are going to make your examples that little bit more specific. So we're gonna have a look at four of the examples that my students generated in the class that I had earlier today. These are all really good examples, and I'm gonna show you why they're good, how they're specific, and how they relate to the question. So this is our first example. For example, in Uganda, a group of young adults killed some elderly people after watching a TV series called How to Get Away with Murder, which motivated them to do these crimes. Remember, we're trying to support the idea that TV causes crime or increasing crime. So somewhere there has to be a cause in this example. Now here we can see that this group of young adults were motivated. So they were caused to do this because they watched a TV series. So we have a very specific TV series that they watched. We have a specific crime that they committed, they committed murder, and we have a specific place that they committed this crime. We are definitely referring to young people, and we're referring to crime. So this ticks all the boxes for a good, specific example. Okay, so moving on to this next one. This says, in the many US school shootings committed by young adults that make global headlines, it is often reported that the shooters have been influenced by violent movies. We see here we have got a specific place. We have got a specific crime. We are showing that these shooters were influenced by movies. So we have got the cause in here. Television is in here. And young adults. So we see that we are talking about younger people. This is very specific and relates to all parts of our main idea. Our next example is, for example, in Russia, research has found that the majority of crimes which were done by younger people were a result of them watching TV programs. We'll notice that this is quite specific because we are talking about a place. The student has also quite nicely managed to refer to the topic in general. Maybe they didn't have a lot of specific knowledge, but they thought, okay, there's been some research in Russia, so this is specific. They're not talking about exact research, so they're not making up research because they don't need to. This is sufficient in Russia, research has found. And then the majority, okay, so a large percentage, a large proportion of crimes that are done by young people, so we're definitely uh, looking at young people, were a result. So this is definitely, these crimes were caused by 
the young people watching TV programs. So in this instance, we haven't actually named the specific crime, but it's still quite a specific example by us mentioning that we are talking about a specific country, which is Russia, and research that has been conducted in that country. The final example that I want to look at for our courses is this one set in Latin America. So for example, some young people in Latin America are inspired to do illegal activities after watching television series that show the life of luxury led by drug traffickers. Once again, we've got a very specific place. We've got a specific group of criminals that the young people are wanting to emulate. We can see that they are doing illegal activities, so they're committing crimes because they are watching television. So we're definitely showing there is a cause and there is a result. So the cause is them watching television and the result is they are doing crimes. So once again, we have another specific example. These are the ways that you're going to start writing really good examples. Make sure you analyze your own topic sentence at the beginning. Think about the exact things your topic sentence is referring to. What are the key words in your topic sentence? Make sure your example includes all of those. So for us, it's really important that we talk about young people. It's really important that we talk about watching television. And it's really important that this causes them to do crimes. All of these four examples that we've looked at cover those specific areas. As a result, they are all really good, very specific examples that support our main idea and would really help you develop your body paragraphs in your task two essays. Now we've had a look at some examples for the causes. Let's move on to the examples for the solutions. We're going to have a look at what makes an effective example for a solution and what makes an ineffective example for a solution. So next, let's have a look at some examples for our solution. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you, I'm going to call a bad example. This is a really common mistake. And then I'm going to show you how we turn this bad example into a good example. So here is one of the examples that my students came up with for our solution. So a solution to crime rates amongst younger people rising was to enforce strict punishments. And this is something I would see a lot. For example, in Qatar, if people commit crimes, there are strict punishments, like their fingers are cut off. This is a very specific example. We're talking about a specific place, which is really nice. And we're showing a specific punishment that happens when crimes are committed. So in Qatar, people commit crimes, there are strict punishments, and then we've given our example where their fingers are cut off. We're using some really nice language here. We're using a conditional. We're showing that when this happens, this is the result. So what is the problem with this example? Well, at the moment, it's not supporting our main idea. The main idea that we're trying to support is that if we implement strict punishments, it's going to stop people committing crimes. But there is no evidence here that in Qatar, less people are committing crimes. And the whole problem is we don't have a result. And that is what this example is missing. If we add the result to the example, then we're going to have a really clear, specific example that supports our main idea. Now I'm going to show you how I've changed this example to make it actually support the idea that we we're talking about. The first part, as you can see, is exactly the same. For example, in Qatar, people commit crimes, there are strict punishments, like their fingers are cut off. We need to show that this is a effective solution. So we put the result. And as a result, this country has a very low crime rates. This result has shown 
that these strict punishments stop people committing crime. As a result, this example now supports the idea that introducing strict punishments reduces crime. This is what we need to do to support our ideas. So don't just look at your main idea and think, okay, what is an example of a strict crime? That's not sufficient, especially when we're giving solutions. Anytime you're giving a solution, you need to show that whatever you're giving an example of has worked. Now, I'm going to give you another example here that we came up with in class. We're going to look at the bad example first and the improved version afterwards. So this is the bad example. It says, for example, in the Philippines, if people are caught with drugs, they are shot on sight. Now, this is definitely very specific. We again using complex grammar, which is really nice. We're giving a specific example of when people do drugs, what happens to them. The reason it's a bad example is there is no result. So it is not currently supporting our main idea. What we need to do to make this a good example is make sure we have this second part. Now, this is the same example with the result added. For example, in the Philippines, if people are caught with drugs, they're shot on sight. And this has resulted in a reduction in the number of drug-related crimes. We see we have a very strict punishments. We see the result of these punishments are that we have less crime. That was our main idea. That was our solution. And now we have an example that actually supports our solution. This is why we always need to have in our mind the purpose of an example. The purpose of an example is to support your main idea. Hopefully you can see from these two examples how these solutions are now supported by providing specific ideas and also providing a result. It's also worth noticing how my students here have used these conditional expressions to show when this happens, this happens, and the result of all of this is it is a solution to our problem. I hope you find this useful and that you can use it in your own essays. Please don't forget to like the video if you have found any of this useful. It really does help me carry on producing these videos. And please remember to subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss out on future content. I hope you found that useful. I hope you'll be able to use that in your own essays. Good luck to you all in your studies, and I'll catch you all in the next lesson.